Something like 30 cubic kilometers of solid rock were ejected out of this volcano, fountaining five, 10 kilometers into the air. You come into the corner of the main town of Shafira. You can't fail to be inspired by the view as you come into Santa Rita Caldera on the ferry. Just this extraordinary geology opening up in front of you. I mean, you almost never see geology where it's laid out on a pallet in front of you, and here is one place where you can do that. Santorini is one of the most fabulous examples of an active volcano. This is called a strato volcano. It's the absolutely typical volcano, like these conical things that you see in textbooks. And all the textbooks show you a very simple conical form with a vertical conduit coming up with the magma coming out of it. This is what they really look like. You can see an enormous amount of internal structure in this volcano, dikes shooting off in all directions. The, the lava flows that are fed by the dikes arriving on the surface, moving downhill, breaking up, forming new deposits. Now, this is all going on 400,000 years ago. That's very recent in geological time, but in fact it's very old in the history of Santorini. And in fact the youngest rocks of all on the volcano are younger than I am. The place we're standing right now erupted in 1500, about 1570, 500 years ago. But just a little bit further up the path, there are lava flows from 1940 and then from 1950. So just 50 or 60 years old. This is the field trip to go on. It's one of the best. And, and it's nice to see like the youngest rocks we've ever seen. And it's, it's, it's good to see, and sort of see like geology happening now. It's got yeah, it's Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Geology is like an active process, it's not just like these are rocks, this is how they form. It's like this is something that's happening in the world today. So it's quite exciting to see. So is that the glassy? Yeah. yeah. The eruptions on this island are of a very sticky magma. So if you took satellite photographs and you sped them up, then it would look like treacle rolling out of a volcanic vent. But actually the lava flows much more slowly than that. And all you'd have heard would be this tremendous noise as if there were dumper trucks full of great blocks of rock that were just falling out of the volcano. So the people living on the cliffs would have had a tremendous view. So at night, because the lava's hot, it would have been glowing red. And then during the day, you'd have a mixture of um, ash explosions. So explosions every few minutes from a summit crater with little rising plumes of ash. And then where the lava enters the sea, you've then got the contact between hot rock and water. You get lots of steam. So it would have been very spectacular, but completely safe. Santorini, eh? Uh, drawing a stratigraphic uh, log of the deposits that we saw today, which we're doing a presentation on. You do stay in nice places and get really good food, and considering how much you pay, this is amazing. Sixteen hundred BC was a completely different story. There was a very violent, explosive eruption. If you look at the way that the deposits have formed from that eruption, it's, it looks as though there might have been a little bit of warning before the, the main eruption started. So this soil was from, from three thousand six hundred years ago, and in the soil we see evidence for human activity. So there's 
broken pieces of pottery. This is probably the lip of a cup or a vase or something like that. And all along this horizon in Santorini we find the same sorts of materials. So there were clearly there were people living here, the Minoans. They had a thriving economy. And presumably these fragments of pot have either been thrown into a gully, which is now a gully again today, or it was in part of a field system which people were ploughing and so on. What I love about this particular eruption, it's not just any old volcanic eruption, it's a piece of the cultural history of Europe. Because on this island, about 1650 BC, there was a flourishing civilization that was terminated by an eruption that began probably one day in the middle of the summer. We don't know how much warning they really had, but what we do know is that when the volcano finally erupted, they probably had less than a day to get out. We see why the people of Akrotiri would have had warning of an eruption. We see that it's just a couple of millimetres of ash, a very coarse ash, and then we see evidence that there's a time break. Once it got going, it started with about eight hours of pumice rain. So if you're wearing a hard hat, you might just have survived. But on the island of Santorini, you find pumice blocks that are 10 or 20 centimetres high, and they would simply have been falling out of the sky and accumulating on the ground. The first phase of the eruption took less than a day and produced a cloud of ash and rock that was maybe as high as 35 kilometres and was probably visible from Crete about 200 kilometres away. So it would have been like standing in a hailstorm, but where the hail fragments are actually 10 centimetre sized bits of pumice. Once you've got more than 20 centimetres of pumice on a roof, the roof will collapse. Then within a few hours it just went into overdrive with huge billowing clouds of hot pyrocastic flow and, and there would have been simply no way to survive. Once the sea got into the volcano then the combination of water and rock became immensely explosive. I mean it was bad enough before. <laughs> Uh, but this explosion shot 30 cubic kilometres of rock into the air, crashing back down to earth and speeding over the landscape. It covered essentially the whole of this island. We're using the observations of the maximum range of class in the graph that we've been given um, to work out the speed that they were ejected. I'd get a positive 100 metres per second. Oh, S is 2,000, uh, but the, uh, trying to work out the rate at which pumice can accumulate without it becoming welded together. I really enjoy this aspect of the course, but it's definitely the best way. Do you know how long it was before Santorini was settled again? I don't think there's any evidence when people returned. I mean, as you can see today, it's still pretty barren, even at the wettest time of the year. And there wouldn't have been much left to grow here. We would speculate that the political upheavals following the loss of a major Minoan port on Santorini might then have triggered political instabilities and led to the demise of the Minoans and the rise of the Mycenaeans. It's always useful to know how the geology is affecting the people. Right? That's one of the most important things. And I've always been interested in history anyway. I think all the field trips made us much closer as a group. There's so much um, to see and to do. It's quite practical, which is really nice. Just, I just think it's an amazing place. <laughs> I spent years looking for another volcano that was anything like Santorini. I found many volcanoes to work on but there's none quite like Santorini in terms of how you can put the story together quite quickly because you can see how all the rocks relate to each other. We love coming here. The geology is so easy to see, it's so easy to teach, and the students really enjoy the field trip. <laughs>